Well, we are finally to the release of Genjutsu no Yohane Sunshine Amir or Yohane no Parahelion. So of course, if you do want to watch this episode in full, you can watch it on Crunchyroll. I'll give you a link in the description where you can go and click on it. As long as you have a premium description, you will be able to watch this episode and it will be available in subtitles for English. So without further ado, we're going to be talking about this episode. So of course, I'm going to go and do a bit of a recap and talk about the episode and my feelings on it. But I'm definitely curious to see how this is going to be handled. I had some things in there uh, that we saw beforehand with the promotional materials. But I was definitely wondering, is this going to be more Love Live or is this going to be more Isekai? I definitely watch a lot of both. And I do like Isekai, so this definitely has piqued my interest. But we never really had something this, I don't know, different in the Love Live world. So I'm curious to see how are they going to handle something so different. Especially in terms of Love Live world. Is this going to be more serious? Or is this going to be a lot more happy and... What do you expect from an idol anime? And I, idol anime can do have their serious moments. Love it has as well. But usually, it de- in general, you could say it's a little bit more about being, you know, being happy and doing idol stuff. So definitely the question is, what is going to be the underlying tone of this? And how much music is going to be in there? Is there going to be a lot of singing or whatnot? And that's what Love Life is known for. So I would bet there would be. I'm definitely looking forward to see what this could possibly have. But without further ado, let's just go jump into the review and stop talking. So this episode starts out and we get to see a young version of Yohane walking on the beach. And then we get to see her walking towards all of her friends. So of course, it's all the girls from Akua, of course. But we get a little look at each of their different outfits and a good idea of what the role would be in the anime. We've already seen this before, but here we get to see it the first time in the anime and we get to see a little preview of that. So here we are going to be looking at the city. This is Tokyo, I believe. And it gets you a pretty good idea of what the era is. Of course, it is going to be that kind of fantasy, kind of like here. But it's a little futuristic, not like insanely far in the future. Definitely some fantasy elements in here, especially with using their fantasy languages and such. But this is where we're going to be finding Yohane and not Yoshiko. Because she will be formerly known as Yohane throughout this anime. So we get to see Yohane and she is going to be singing to people in her audition and she does a pretty bang up job singing a song and these people here agree wait a minute let's zoom on the guy in the middle is that a guy in my love life oh my god clearly this is a spinoff there's never ever been a face of a guy in love life ever well you know maybe there has been some other times but wow clearly we can see this is a fantasy world but they went and talked about you know, what is your goals? And Yohan is like, I'm going to be like a superstar. I'm going to be super famous. And I'm going to have all the success. And by the way, you better ask for my autograph right now. So she comes a little cocky and she fails the audition. Wonder why. But she is definitely is struggling. She's trying to land jobs and she uses her little bit of her money to try to call her mom. And her mom's like, yo, what's your birthday? So apparently she forgot her birthday and she actually turned 16. So if you're wondering what her age is in this era. So we actually even do get to see her mother as well. And you know, Yohane is an adult and trying to get a job, but she's struggling so hard. And she's been doing this for two years. She started when she was 14. And now she's basically saying to her daughter, you come home because you, you, you're a failure. However, Yohane doesn't want to go back because she does not like being in Numazu and she never wants to go back at all. But she doesn't really have much chance because she has no money and her parents won't give her any money so she goes back to Numazu. But they have a kind of pretty nice map that shows you where Tokyo is and Numazu. So she goes back and we get to see a little bit of things like Mitosi where you know, Chika Rico met. And we get to see Mount Fuji as well as the Mikan which we all love. But I guess Mikan girl ain't here yet. But one of the things I definitely noticed about this anime is the really nice art. And this is definitely one of the scenes that really depicts it. So this gets a really nice view of Numazu. And wow, this just looks really nice. If anything, this anime has proven it's got some pretty nice art, which I am definitely a fan of. So we get to see Johanna come back and she's like, no one's greeting me. But don't worry, her dog Lilaps is here. Who is Lilaps? Well, if you remember from the anime season 2 up to 5, Yoshiko had a dog. Or rather, she found a dog, and she named it Lilaps. So therefore, this dog is going to be named Lilaps. That was not the name of the real dog. That's just the name she gave to it. But here we are. We have Lilaps. And Lilaps also talks, so... We got talking dogs in this anime as well. 
Chico walks around a town a bit and realizes not much changed, and that's also kind of applies to her. But then she also noticed a creature that eats a lot and a pig cow. So she sees the Zudamata master herself, and she just basically saying, Yeah, that's not my friend, I don't know who she is. But then she notices that there is a sign of a bunch of stuff she's selling, and then she gets whacked by one of the ads that Hanamaru was handing out, and it's basically slapping in her face saying, you know, she could probably help her out. And then Hanamaru notices Yohane, but Yohane, which is holding that flyer, kind of flies out of her hand, and suddenly this kind of really weird effect happens where basically hurts everyone's ears, and some strange magic is going on, but we're not entirely sure, and clearly... We know it's some crazy magic and saying we get to see another guy's face in here. And there's also some dark portal, but I'm a little more worried about that guy showing up in this anime. And in fact, we even see these two little guys here too, so something's clearly amiss. We also get to see the name of this pig cow, the Shishinoshin, I think is how you say it. And Hanamaru is comforting that thing. But Hanamaru then goes to Yoshiko and says, Yo, I was able to make this new bread. And trying to basically t talk with... Yohane, but Yohane's like, nah, I'm gonna go away. And she basically talks to Lilabs and saying, you know, I don't care about this town. I don't care what happens to all these people and, you, you know, Hanamaru who's struggling and stuff because all this stuff is happening. So then Lilabs decides to bring Yohane back to a spot that she used to go here when she was really young. She used to basically play on this stump and sing and use her stick that's kind of supposed to be like a baton. And eventually she stopped doing it because a lot of kids made fun of her when she did that. However, Hanamaru was mentioned saying, no, I actually like that. It inspired me. In fact, it inspired me to start making sweets because I, you found what you liked and I found what I liked. So then they hand her the magic conductor's baton and tell her, you should go sing and do what you did before. So this actually leads to the first song of the anime, Far Far Away. So, Yohani gets another solo song, and this one is actually pretty nice. It's not what I expect from a song that you say, you know, this is by Yohani, but a lot of the art is really nice, and you get to see a bunch of different scenes, and I really appreciate the effort that they put in a lot of these custom animations and all these scenes. It's definitely visually pleasing. The song itself is a lot slower, and definitely a bit more of a dramatic love kind of song. But I honestly do like this song. It's not my favorite Yohane song out there for sure. It's not really the Yohane style. Especially from something called Genjutsu no Yohane. We would think it would definitely be a little more dark and intense. But we'll have other songs like that. But there was a lot of scenes I did like in here. And the imagery was really pretty. And you get to see a lot, a lot of the flowers and all. So honestly I, I do like this one. And this definitely sets a pretty nice precedent for the songs coming up. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what else they can bring in this anime. Following the song that she just sang, this staff comes up and, you know, boom. She suddenly has magic and that's related to her singing. So, <laughs> who could have seen that coming? But I was like, whoa, Zira, you can sing and that's like magical and all that. Here, have some bread. I, it's really nice. And she also says welcome home, which if you remember, she, no one welcomed her home and suddenly she... It's basically, oh, I feel a little emotional about that. But then past that, we get to see some little snippets of, of the other girls, what they're doing, like, yo, delivering mail. We see Daya, she's, you know, in an office signing documents. We get to see Kana, who's with a robotic robot frog and with some scuba tanks. I guess does some scuba diving with that. We got Riku in a library. And then we got Mari, who's some evil witch, I guess. Just like the real anime but we get to see Yoshiko in an attic and she's eating the bread and she's like this is good but she's also realizing that she's finally home and she can recognize that she's where she should be but then Lilab says you barely passed that test so then Yohane tries to cast a spell on the dog to punish her but then realizes that she actually can't cast magic so yeah and that will end the episode Though we do have one more song to show at the end, and that is the ending theme, Genjutsu Mysterium. So let's take a look at that ending theme. Mirai, 
So that was the song Genjutsu Mysterium. We already listened to the song, but we get to see for the first time the actual theme itself. And I really like the part where they had all the portraits with the characters and the, the backgrounds and with the animations. That looked really nice. And of course, there was a lot of nice looking scenes. We had Yohane falling in the water, which you can definitely see in a lot of other songs, that kind of imagery. And that's kind of like, you know, you're drowning under so much pressure or emotions and such. We also get to see a bunch of other scenes that definitely really builds this kind of imagery of intensity. And the song itself definitely builds that kind of emotions. But of course, it's, there's a lot of scenes that are really pretty. And of course, I also really like the chorus, but I'm trying to understand what's going on here. Where they're seeing like potentially some fighting, kind of coming out of the water with the robot frog and you know, flying and colliding, all that stuff. Oh, there's just a lot of nice decent moments in here. It's a really nice song and it's kind of what I always wanted Deep Resist to always be. Because I always felt like that kind of had a little bit of that fancy kind of style to the song. But I think this really catches it and of course definitely leans a little more to the Yohane aspect. And this is what I was trying to base on because you know we got to listen to the song before. I really thought this is what the anime is going to be more like and right now of course it's just the first episode and definitely generally build up to the later episodes generally it's a little more lighthearted. you know they got to introduce characters nothing too crazy is happening but that was kind of what i was imagining more of what the anime would be with more than intensity and the fights and maybe we'll get there but that's definitely what i was hoping for but we'll see how it shifts towards that as right now it definitely seems to be a little more lighthearted. but that song was definitely probably one of my favorites that kind of come out this year it's actually really fun to listen to but paired with this animation it makes it a lot better as well that combined experience it's not exactly the craziest ending theme i've ever seen basically in, especially in the isekai world and the shonen world with all their animations and how how much they really go out on that I don't think this quite stands up to that, but there was definitely a lot of parts that I did like in this ending theme, and it's definitely one that really holds up, and, you know, I'm curious to see if this is genu if this can genuinely trick people to thinking, you know, this is genuinely an isekai kind of anime with no roots based on the idol world. So I guess there's a lot more singing in here than you would probably expect from an isekai. And then the episode ends with a little snippet get view of the city and we get to see some lightning going across the stomp. Uh, Matt had to do something with Mario. And then we get a little preview of the next episode. We get to see that we're going to interact more with the girls. Of course, probably one of the things a lot of people are focusing is on this person on the left, Daya. So we're probably going to go see Daya. We're probably going to go see Chica. And the person on the left, we already got a snippet of information about this character already. No, it's not a male. I know some people thought, oh, maybe that's a male. No, please. It's Love Live. You can't have ma male characters that are main characters. That's illegal. That goes against the Love Live code. That's just not happening. But it's the assistant to Daya. So whatever role they play, I don't, I, I don't know. Nothing crazy significant. But it was significant enough where it got entry on their website. So we'll have to definitely see what role this character has. Probably no singing, I would have to guess. I guess you never know. But yeah, that's more or less it. That's the first episode of this anime. And of course, it's just one episode, so it's hard to draw any conclusions based on this. I like the songs. And you know, an anime definitely got some nice visuals in certain parts. But I guess the big question going forward that I want to be able to answer soon is, am I watching this because it's love life or am I watching this because I truly, really, really enjoy what it's in there? I don't know yet. Of course, I, re I really like the songs if that's really all I need, to be honest. But does this stand alone? Like if, you know, if you didn't have any attachments to the character already, would you enjoy this? That's definitely a question that I want to put out to you guys. Don't You don't really have to answer now because obviously can't judge an anime by one episode but i'm really curious but what do you guys think about this episode what do you think about the setup the characters what do you think about the story so far the environments the 
interactions that these girls have so far how do you feel about their new roles and how do you feel about these songs what do you think about them so far and what are your hopes for the rest of this anime let me know all about that in the comments below anyways thank you guys for watching i hope you guys enjoyed i won't be able to cover any of the episodes going into the future for quite some time so <laughs> this is gonna be my only one for quite some time i'm gonna be pretty dang busy for multiple weeks after the end of this week so yeah hopefully this is good enough i'll probably i'll see if i'll come back and try to do more reviews later but i'll at least try to watch them for sure um i don't know if i'll do quick reviews or anything like that but anyways let me know all about this in the comments below anyways thank you guys for watching i hope to catch you guys in another video soon